Check this out, guys. I can get a path from Hartford to Luton completely on mesh core, no internet or MQTT or anything. This is going completely over radio. That's nuts. Welcome back to the channel, guys. Hope everyone's doing well. Today, we were excited to launch version seven of the TDEC and TDEC Plus firmware for Meshcore. So with this comes some really exciting new changes and one of which is the ability now to be able to manage paths directly on the T-Deck. So as we know Meshcore can do some pretty cool stuff when it comes to paths. So now you can basically go into sort of one of your contacts here. So we'll pick Mark here. So what we can see here is on the right we have a new menu called path. When you bring up the path screen up here it will show you your path. So you can actually see the first byte of each repeater there which is exactly the same as how the app does it so you can actually put in a custom path if you want to you can do that exactly the same way as you do in the app um, you can also reset your path you can set a direct zero hop so if you're you know right near a user and you don't want to you want to just force it to go direct you can and you can also save paths as well so if you find a really cool path you know to a distant station you can actually save that path and give it a name which is which is super cool so you can see there's a couple of couple of paths here that i've actually set so hartford to luton path um so so this is going to get seriously cool now because it means obviously you can just set a path save it and then you can go back to that path um you know another time and the cool thing is it's not actually kind of associated with that contact either so we can use that path you know for another contact that might be in the same sort of area and that screen going off brings me to another feature so normally you obviously turn the screen on and off by pushing this trackball some people have expressed a bit of frustration that this trackball the press doesn't actually mean enter so you know like for example previously if you tapped on this once it would just turn the screen off now it acts as an enter key which is pretty cool i think it works really well so what's happened to the standby feature is you just basically hold down the trackpad and now the screen will turn off after a couple of seconds so that's a lot better i had actually got really used to using it and it didn't bother me but you know now it's good to be able to you know use that as an enter key some of the menu options will still require you to use the enter key like entering passwords things like that but i think it's a really good change that and it's going to help people kind of <laughs> not get so frustrated with it public messages coming in thick and fast there let's have a look at some other stuff so obviously we mentioned we talked about paths and how you can manage paths on the on the t-deck now which is super cool um what you can also do is manage paths on repeaters as well so if you go into this repeater here um the vark cabin omni which is another legendary repeater that is just blowing everyone's mind right now how far it's actually getting out um so shout out to everyone that's helped with that so if we log into that repeater here it will take a second to get a path once we've got a path, we'll be able to see what that, that path is. Um, so we can see here we've got a path. It's a two-hot path, and we can go to path here, and we can see it's gone via uh, My Omni and Epping. See, I know these off by heart now. So you can see here also it's highlighted this, this box. So, yeah, that's the path. If we wanted to change that path, I'm not going to bother, but if we wanted to, you could just go up here, and you could just you know tinker with the path and change things that way you know as the mesh grows there's going to be more variations on paths you know there'll be more than one path to a destination and that's great because it adds resiliency to the mesh and it just means that you know you might see some sort of crazy paths popping up here where you go what wow why has it gone why has it gone to london and then back out to like luton or something like that and it's just because it works in a way that the first repeaters to respond get added to the path so it's not really any more complicated than that and the reason why you might get a different path from time to time is just probably because of interference at different stations maybe those ones didn't hear your your packet maybe there's a collision or something like that and it's just found another route around that problem so it's like self-healing it's super cool how mesh works but yeah so we can see here we've got the path everything else we can do that we can reset that we can save that path you know, you can do all of that stuff. You can obviously then go into your repeater and manage things, get the stats and do all the usual stuff that you can from the CLI. Another useful thing is now if we go back one step, we've got a green dot here, which shows that we've basically previously logged into that repeater. It's not like a, you, are, you are de facto connected to that repeater. It's not that at all. It just shows that you have been logged into that. And when you go back into it, you haven't got to go through that login process again. You know, 
you might have to if the path has changed and you can't reach that but so yeah really nice little features this green dot is also the same on the rooms now we did have that green dot on the rooms before showing that it was connected and it also pulled the room server from time to time to actually check if you were connected and stuff it doesn't do that now we've removed that because it wasn't actually kind of working that well so we've made a decision to change that so you will see green dots exactly the same as you will um, for the repeaters it doesn't necessarily mean you're logged in but now when you do go to a room server once you're logged in it will actually connect and just check for new messages so it kind of does a, a quick check there which I think is a better way of doing it and hopefully we'll see that working a lot better so aside from that there's a few little tweaks under the hood one of which is the way it says preferences so now like your sound preferences and stuff are kind of persisted when you kind of reboot um, things like that so talking about sound there's actually an additional sound you can add now um, so you can actually have a different sound for new adverts and or existing adverts so the first thing I did anyway was change my sound from the from the really annoying to um to something else so i've actually got like you remember like the windows sound when you sort of clicked on something it was like a really subtle little click so every time i receive an advert i get that little click sound so now it's possible to add existing dash advert dot mp3 to your sd card and it will play that for existing adverts and obviously the new dash advert dot mp3 um, is for replacing the sounds there's also a lot of other sounds as well you can use i might actually link my sounds in the description actually just so that you can just drag them onto the sd card um, and that might make it a bit easier for you so that guys is about it if you want to get hold of a t-deck there's a link below in the description to where you can get these from i love these little devices just so useful to have a completely offline um i say offline but off the internet and just completely standalone um i really like that sort of way of doing things so this update is available on the meshcore flasher so go get that installed to your t-deck and enjoy catch you next time Thank you.